Hello and welcome to the podcast. And today we have another special guest, a good brother of mine that I've been blessed to know for a number of years. Uh, you'll also like to know that um, the team member that I talk, the team members I talk about that are, are robust in nature and more importantly, humble and knowledgeable, Joe is one of them. And he's been gracious enough to come on the podcast today. I've been on his shows in the past, so we'll leave his links up in the description later on so you can go check out um, his shows and, and the really good decodes that he has been putting up for a number of years. Uh, before we get started, if you're new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share as it helps the channel grow. Uh, so once again, without further ado, Joe Williams, welcome to our podcast. Thank you, JD. JD, <laughs> man, I, you know what, J I'm, I'm so proud of you, man. You could, how many times did I tell you you should have a show? We, we spoke about this several times, yep. but I believe God had you uh, sharpening your ax to the point to where right now, man, you can cut through steel right now with your knowledge, man. So it's good to be truly blessed like you are, man. And I'm lucky to know. But, hey, appreciate you having me on here. Oh, it's, a, it's our honor. And thank you. You're, you have been instrumental in this movement for me in many ways. And, and uh, we'll talk about your background in a second. But uh, mm -hmm. Joe is living proof, folks, that I didn't choose to do this. This was something that, you know, Joe, amongst others, asked me to do. And more importantly, uh, as I said before, God had kind of tasked before me because I wasn't really seeing anybody else that was, there were good truthers out there, but just not resonating with the full length of what I knew was possible. And so sometimes uh, we're waiting on God and he's waiting on us. So it's kind of how funny that oddity, how that works. But anyway, thanks for being here, Joe. So for the, for the viewers who don't know you, uh, and I know a lot of your followers are going to be watching, which is cool. Uh, just kind of give our audience a brief overview on your background, military, your police background, where you grew up, uh, and how you came to to be, get involved in the movement. Well, uh, I was in the Army, uh, served in a, a chemical company. I'm not going to say the chemical company, but I was in a chemical company, which, you know, a lot of the training gave me my doubts with uh, the this chemical biological thing that's going on here in the states with these vaccines and stuff we're not that's a whole new different conversation i'm not gonna get into that only did four years um uh, uh came back to houston got on with the police department worked 25 years uh, as a police officer um during the time there i picked up hobbies of writing movie screenplays and actually was successful third place in Hollywood screenwriting competition. I'm a co-writer. I'm a co-writer in that. And um, also working on changing it into a book, of course. Uh, I, this is your copy, JD. <laughs> I'm a, I got to autograph it and mail it to you. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I'm you know very creative. But uh, the movement started when I realized how bad the media was lying about Donald Trump. Now, mind you, in, I would say, 2017, 2018, I still really wasn't a Donald Trump fan right? and because I didn't understand him. I really wasn't paying too much attention to him until one day I listened to uh, the news and they talked about how he said to inject uh, stuff into your bloodstream, uh, disinfect it. And I'm like, hold up, that guy didn't say that because I watched that speech and he didn't say that he wasn't talking about injecting disinfectant in there which he was talking about a gentleman that works with that blue light that works as a disinfectant you know when you go wash your hands you see the blue light that's mid over your your hands and stuff but he was talking to him about that and the media took it and twisted it so i started digging deeper and once i fell into the rabbit hole it was over i I started looking at everything that's going on. And I've been looking at this movement from a 40,000 foot view ever since. Cool. Thank you very much for the uh, kind of the overview. Um, one of the things before we kind of get into the meat of our discussion today, which is going to be primarily, you know, geopolitical and financial, um, because you're really good at the, you're good at a lot of things, but you're, I've always appreciated your, your geopolitical decodes as it relates to what's going on overseas and in our military, but given your background and such. Um, one of the first things you taught me when we met on uh, YouTube <clears throat> through a fellow Truthers channel way back when we we're blessed to pull us to the middle is you taught me that from a, and I don't know the correct term, so forgive me, because there's a lot of them, right? There's African-American, right. there's black, ADOS, whatever you call it, whatever, however you want to call your culture in terms of the name, and everybody has a different feeling on it. Right. But you, you gave me as a, a good friend and a brother, 
race has never been an issue for us. So we could have these conversations more freely. And, and we've learned from each other, as you said, over the years. And one of the first things that for me that you taught me was from a different racial standpoint, that it isn't even about race and it's not even about culture, because that's kind of the first go to that most people in society bend towards. But it's really ultimately about ideological mindset and division. And we know that God hates division and the cabal and the deep state have worked overtime to try to divide us politically, racially, financially, the whole lot. Right. And so I would love for you to kind of share with the audience when you realized for yourself that the system was working against you from a divisionistic standpoint, when did you realize that? And, and how did you take steps to move away from it? Well, I, I, I learned that late in life as well, too, because I've had my battles with racism at least three or four times in my life that I can pinpoint, and which really wasn't too fun, you know, coming from a young kid, uh, um, getting, you know, this stuff thrown at him. Part of the reason why I didn't stay in the military four years, I, I'm only four years, I only stayed in four years because of what I experienced in the army. But once I uh, start doing more research, I realized that it's not about race. They, they're using this to keep you separated. The best way to control someone is to keep them fighting amongst each other. And because of that, I, I, I realized that, hold up, we're all the same. Why are we using race in culture and all of this? Yes, we were, grew up in two different households, which is culture, but no, the, the government is using all of this tension in order to keep us separate. See, the white guy like this, see, the black guy like this, and, and, they, and they, keep, they keep us butting heads. They keep us, why? And that is the best way to control us because we're not paying attention to what they're doing. And that's what they wanna do. They wanna keep us butting heads so that they can keep doing what they're doing. But unfortunately, the, uh, everything is being out. Everything is getting out. All the information is getting out. And it's getting out fast and furious. And, and, and here's the thing, their own tools is coming to backfire on us. The, the internet was used, was to me was a good way to corral people into following what they want you to follow, but they just did not realize when they locked us down, people started learning. People started passing in, uh, information on to each other and this movement grew and everyone in the group, and you, you can say MAGA if you want to, but these people now see that, hold up, it's not about race. It's about them versus us. It's about good and evil. This is good old fashioned, good and evil, biblical stuff. So, and, and it's crazy on how it goes back to the Bible, which they're trying to get away from. They're doing their best to get away from it. But I was telling my mother the other day, I said, I don't care how hard Satan tries to get away from God, he always needs it. And, and, and it's crazy on how it works. But if you if you look at it from that point of view, you'll know it's all gonna go back to the same thing. Yeah, absolutely right. Everything, the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? They stay the you know, same, right. God, God right. wins and we win by proxy. So right. um very good. Thank you for that. Um so I guess as as decent as any of an on-ramp to talk about the geopolitical stuff. Right. And maybe talk about the most recent event last night with the Super Bowl. And you and I are both, uh, you know, athletes and former collegiate athletes. And right. it's been frustrating for me. And I'm sure for you, disheartening as somebody who you know, loves the athleticism of playing to see how the cabal and the deep state have corrupted every aspect of mm -hmm. our lives from music to sports, to food, to politics, to whatever, every <clears throat> every fabric of our of our society they have infiltrated i think most people here already know that but um in regards to the super bowl last night as you and i talked about offline there and, and i shared it with our telegram channel I, i've shared it with you as well in text there's an interesting thing that currency 365 broke down yesterday um about all the cabal codes 2020 to 24 and the uh the mirroring of you know the sequence of events you know the chiefs won in 2020 they won again last night there's a lot of debate about, you know, the cabal codes in that. Was that a good thing? Was it a bad thing? You know, I guess we'll find out in the scheme of things here over the next week or two. But just on that, from your geopolitical decodes as sort of an on-ramp, how did you see that? And, and what do you see in regards to that going forward in terms of 
you know, the reset in terms of the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East? Do you think they're going to continue to move forward or are they going to kind of come to a slowdown for a little while? I believe it's going to it's going to pick up. Um, it didn't help with Kansas City winning because of the. Um, what's old girl, the singer? I can't even think of her name. Oh, Swift. So yeah, yeah, yeah Swift. That Swift. The Swift connection with the Democratic Party and all of that, and, and it didn't help that they won. But uh, um, I'm not even sure if that's a true a true relationship between Travis Kelsey and her. Uh, but just like I mean, we we discussed this. Uh, there are clues in there somewhere, and some people said that if San Francisco wins, this is going to happen. And if Kansas, I don't know, because it's, I believe that uh, good guys are in control now. God is in control now. And it's hard to determine if this evil entity is still there. I mean, and and just like you, I hate the fact that uh, this evil entity infected this, this, you know, the sport I love, football. Football is one of my favorites. And then, you know, basketball, baseball, uh, it's infested in everything. Music is infested. And you're a music guy, and you know, just on the other side of the uh, mic, uh, you know what goes on in that industry and how it infected just everything, everything. And and I love me. I love old school. I love, you know, the old school soulful stuff, 70s, 80s, 90s music, before it got really, uh, before it, it was uh, infected, it's, uh, if it's a good word that I can use. Uh, but as for the game last night, I, 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 I didn't pay too much attention to it last night. I didn't look for the clues, uh, because I knew it was going to be there anyway. Uh, and I figured within the next day or two, uh, someone else will probably break it down a little bit better, a little more than what I can. I'm not as good as breaking down the, the codes that some of the people are, but I, uh, I looked at it and, and I knew, but one thing that I do follow, especially in movies, yeah, they're still putting the codes out there. Um, I watched the movie Argyle the other day, and in that they talked about MK Ultra. They even call it by its name, MK Ultra, and showed examples of it. And I'm like, okay, you can't get away from any of it. It's it's embedded in society. It's it's like by default, it's there. And it's going to take a slow grind to get rid of all of this stuff, but it's there. But uh, um, as for last night and the movement that's coming up right now, the deep state is going to get really desperate. Right now. They're going to get really, 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 really desperate right now because they're losing. They're losing so bad to the point to where it's going to get dangerous. now. And I give it until August. It's going to be just, it's going to pick up pace. And then after August, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where you have to probably wear a bulletproof vest when you walk out of your own door. Uh, just how stupid these people are about to get. Because uh, they're going to, they're going to do what they, they have been doing for years, but it's going to be on a concentrated level. Yeah, <clears throat> no, it's true. Um, I don't have the opportunity to, to talk to a lot of my guests with this subject because they don't have the background you have. So I thought it was pretty apropos to talk to you about, you know, cops have this thing called the cop hunches or an instinct, right. you know, about things right. you, we were detective and you had to interrogate, I'm sure several suspects. So you know how to read between the lines of the inner truth versus right. what's being shared. Take that experience that you had, Joe, from the past of both military and um, police experience and put that hat on, if you will, with what we're seeing today. Right. And again, you know, this is just your own personal observation, right? Nobody knows hundred percent. What right. do you see? <clears throat> how do you see this playing out over the next, I don't know, four to six months? How, how, what's your kind of forecast on things? Well, one of the things that uh, drives me crazy is the fact when I watch these hearings, they're not asking the right question, especially, you know, in an investigative atmosphere. They're not asking the right questions. First, you develop uh, uh, this person who they are, show their credibility. Once you do that, you work your way into what you need to know. And you back, you, you corner them into telling the truth or telling a lie. And, and 
you can do that by asking simple questions that would actually give you three answers just from one question. And, and it was one of the things I was actually pretty good at. Now, I didn't go into the, the, the detective side of it, but I was more of a street, a street investigator. Basically, uh, I was in a uh, uniform pretty much my whole life. So, um, and I, I really didn't want to get into the detective side because I'm more of a community person. So I, I love doing that. But yeah, just uh, like right now, when you watch these hearings, they're not asking questions like, say, for instance, the deep state would always say they did their job, that they, they did their job, or uh, they didn't have, uh, let's just say the voting thing. There was no, uh, uh, no widespread uh, cheating or anything like that. They're going to categorize it to make it seem like it's this big when everyone knows it's this big. And uh, uh, they, they're not asking the right question. And that to me tells me that they're, and forget, uh, forgive me if I'm dragging on, it tells me that they're stretching this thing, the plan, they're stretching it longer because we were ahead of schedule, uh, which is part of the reason why like when I would get on with Amina, Amina, they would cut us quickly. They'll cut our lives quickly or they will, I can't get in touch with her. She can't get in touch with me. Why? Because we would uh, go through and, you know, just, j just break down these codes really quick. She's really good at that. But we would talk about how, what they're doing. And we were getting so ahead of the plan that they limited what we could do. And in this, if you notice the Kerry Lake situation, you see, there's no resolution to that. Why? Because they're stretching it. They're stretching it because we're ahead of schedule. We are. We're ahead of schedule. They probably planned on it going this long, but had no idea that it, was, it didn't have to go this long because people are waking up faster than what you think. I believe this country is more conservative than, than what a lot of people think. So, yeah, it, it's the, the questions that you would ask and all that. Yeah, it's driving me crazy watching these hearings because they, they, they're not asking the right questions. Well, yeah, and that's, you know, that's by design, obviously. I think that's part of a <clears throat> bigger equation of a wake-up call to get people more and more involved, those who are still kind of unaware of what's going on, people with jobs and kids and right. different predicaments don't have the time that they should have to be able to do the deep dives that we've been afforded. So, Like, like Dominion. The Dominion, they, not once did anyone ask them, was the system set up to do exactly what it did? You're asking these people, did you rig it? And they're going to say no, which they didn't. Right. They didn't do it. They didn't rig the, uh, the election. They set it up to do exactly what it was supposed to do. So therefore, they didn't rig it, if, if you get what I'm saying. It's semantics. It's semantics. And if you watch all the interviews and the way they answer their questions, it's semantics. It's all mm -hmm. semantics. If you ask the right question, you will back them in a the corner and they can't, they, they, they have to answer the question. They, it, but they're not asking the right question. But watch what happens, like right now. I would use this analogy before. I said, you know how when uh, the Navy turned those ships around, it takes a big, giant turn in order to make a U-turn. Where mm -hmm. we're in that big, uh, giant turn where we're getting ready to straighten up now. We're getting ready to straighten up and head back into the harbor. But it took a while for that big giant ship to turn around. But now we have everything straight. Now watch what happens now when they go to trial. Watch the questions that are going to be asked then. Because these questions that are going to come now ought to be uh, uh, straight to the point. And, and dealing with the semantics, they're going to have to gear their question to, for, to force these people to answer the question. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So you kind of segue nicely, Joe, into my next question. Thank you for that indirectly. That's because yeah. we kind of telepathically know each other so well. We kind of <laughs> anticipate each other. I can't, folks, every time we talk on the phone, Joe will be like, I was just going to say that, or I was just going to ask that, or it's just yeah. funny how yeah. we're, some people you have in life or you're in sync like that. You just intuitively yeah, know each other. That's my spiritual brother. Yeah, there you go. My there brother you go. from another mother. You mean you can't see the resemblance? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You just got all the hype, though. <laughs> yeah, but you got the look, so it's a watch. <laughs> um, so the next question I want to ask you on your segue, Joe, talking about the ships, is you see now uh, it's being reported Syria is ready to go to war. You know that our deep state, both 
you know, geopolitically, militarily, is trying to inflame Iran into doing their part in blocking the Red Sea and the Strait of Hormuz, which we know is invariably going to affect the supply chain, the oil cost, and you know, so on and so forth. Where I'm seeing in California, it's starting to slowly uptick the cost of gas, you know, a little bit here, but here and there. But if you you know what to look for, you can see it. So, what do you see as far as that? Uh, both, <clears throat> you know, a time or a rough aggregate timeline and because so, you're, like I said, you're really good at the geopolitical breakdowns as far as this goes, in my opinion. So what do you see as far as um, inflaming tensions for war in the Middle East to get people's eyes, you know, away from certain things and into the Middle East as a whole? How, how do you see that playing out? Well, if you allow me to put the conspiracy hat back on, um, a lot of a lot of what needs to be done has already been done. There's just a lot of information being exposed now, um, a, a slow trickle in order to uh, get the information out because some people respond to just getting uh, small, small amounts of information and some people respond to a Band-Aid being ripped off completely. And in this situation, I believe we're gonna probably get close to the brink of war. Um, we may even see an event. I think we're going to see a couple of events, to be honest with you, between now and uh, the election and probably after the election, too, because they're not going to fare well if uh, Trump does uh, win the election in uh, November. So um, right now, like this morning, uh, they're broadcasting how they found um, made more areas that were buried beneath uh, uh, hospitals and schools and all of that, they found even more uh, tunnels. And, uh, um, and, and this is building there where they, they raided uh, these couple of villages and got, they were able to free up some hostages. But remember, Donald Trump had peace in the Middle East. And as a matter of fact, I think he's up for another uh, Nobel Peace Prize, if I'm correct. Uh, so that makes it, what, six, I think it is, six nominations where a lot of people didn't know about. And I, th I believe that Netanyahu is being exposed right now because he, I think he allowed this to happen. He, right now, he's saying that what happened on October 7th is like nine times worse than 9-11, which is a clue for us. It's like, okay, you're going to use that saying that that's worse than 9-11. 9-11, we lost 3,000 people because of what they were doing and because it was a, 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 a flag. False, false flag, flag yeah, yeah, false flag moment. I believe this is their version of a false flag moment. And Netanyahu was uh, asked by Trump to partner in on him when he went and took out the leader, which Netanyahu backed out at the last minute. That told you who he was. It's like, okay, he didn't want to have anything to do with that. But after it happened, he wanted to say, oh, I still had something to do with that. No, Th I believe Netanyahu is being exposed right now. And, um, because he allowed that to happen on his watch. So it's a lot that's gonna be exposed, but you you have to stand back and look at that 40,000 foot view. Don't jump on the, you know, the bandwagon so quick, just wait before you jump and look. And right now, I believe there's some more exposures that's, that's about to come out right now. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, so let's back up a second, because in your analysis, you're saying in the election of November. So are you saying you think there will be a normal election cycle? Uh, I think it will be. Um, and I believe with the assistance of uh, the military, I believe there will be one. And it's going to be paper ballots. That's what I think. If it hadn't already, the, the selection, because it could happen sooner. It could happen sooner because uh, I'm 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 looking at uh, a lot of things Donald Trump said and and some of his speeches and March I don't I don't know I, we've we've spoken about March uh, being an influential a month for financial uh, uh, decisions or financial movement and I believe you know there's some things we're going to find out about that too because you're looking at a constitutional cr uh, crisis dealing with them exposing the fact that um, the election was, they cheated, just basically put it, put it out there, is that they cheated. And a lot of information is going to come out. It's going to force co the uh, Congress to make a decision. 
but um, I think it's going to be an election, but it's going to, it's not going to be the traditional style election. I think and, and it may not even be in November, to be honest with you. So, uh, be, and that's only because of the, uh, the threat of, you know, all these false flags. So, you know, okay. I don't want to yeah. give two different answers saying that yes, it's going to happen to no, it's not. Right. But it, it, it's all going to be based on their reaction once more truths start coming out. Okay. Yeah, so with that, gonna, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying because they're they're going to panic. They're going to panic. They're going to hit hit the red button and, and and try to you know flip the table uh, the best way they can uh, because it's going to get bad. It's going to get bad. No, I, I agree. The tensions are mounting. You can see that, and I think right. people's people's patience and sanity is being frayed as well. And that's what our whole aim, as you know, Joe, with this channel, and you are part of that is to try to help people put the pieces together to give them a sense of calm and clarity in the chaos and confusion to kind of counteract that. Right. So with that in mind, with what you're saying, uh, we also have a couple of other issues at play, as you well know, one of which is that, you know, the Supreme Court is still hearing the 2020 election with Lloyd Brunson. Um, it's my understanding that we were supposed to have him on late January. We, we got his team told us that they needed to reschedule. They had gotten some news about the case that they weren't allowed to talk about yet. Um, yeah. And I, I don't want to speculate whether it's good or bad, but it was enough to cessate the, the interview for a later date. Uh, and right. so with that in mind, we know, you know, they say all, all eyes are on Clarence Thomas as the Supreme Court leader, thankfully. So. With that in play, do you think that they are going to overturn the 2020 election? I mean, I think they have enough evidence to do it, but the question is, will they? How do you how do you see that? And, and you know, that's I'm I'm, I'm anxious. I can't wait because I want to I want to see how they're they're going to work through that. Because I'm curious uh, because they know for a fact that there were some improprieties in that election. They know that they have it. They have it recorded. They have it videoed. They have everything they need. They need because after the 20, 2016 election, um, right after Trump created uh, the Space Force, which the Space Force is actually talking about the, you know, the cyberspace as opposed to outer space. But in cyberspace, they did everything. I even have documentation showing that they watermarked all the ballots. It, it, it's a certain weight, paperweight on the ballots that they were supposed to use, and they didn't use it. Um, they had, and if you notice, you've seen some of the camera uh, camera angles that they had when they were doing the counting. How did they know, you know, how did you get hold of these cameras? Which, of course, it was already in place that everything was recorded, but what they were expecting was the fact that they did not expect Hillary to lose. So they have judges in place that would say, okay, if it comes, if they catch you and it comes to it, we're going to throw it out, which is what's going on right now. But if you notice, these people are being tried for the lesser of all the crimes, not the major of all the crimes. They're getting charged for the lesser of all the crimes. Like, say, for instance, the uh, Carrie Lake situation. When they, um, these guys test uh, testified and, and, you know, they were on the stand, asked these questions, they committed perjury. And you notice how the judge just basically ignored the fact that these people committed perjury, but kept the uh, kept the trial moving and ended up she ended up losing. Well, I'm looking at the entire thing. I'm like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. They're stretching it. They're stretching this situation out a little longer uh, because they're going to hit them so hard in the next couple of months because it's going to come fast and furious. Everything, all these rulings are going to come down pretty much one after the other. If not the next day, it'll be the next week. They, these rulings are gonna come out back to back to back to back to back to the point they can't react to it. That's why I said you have to be prepared because these people are gonna panic and they're gonna do something stupid. The false flags are gonna take over because they do not want you to get this information. So uh, I, I got away from the question, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think you kind of circled it fairly well um, as far as that. So a couple other pivot points. So, and, and I just, cause I mentioned there's, there's a couple things at play, right? And there, there's more than that, but two key, key things I wanted to talk to you about. 
So we talked about that. Then there's the element while the Supreme Court is, while that's good, because it's a lot of, you know, moves and counter moves, right? Right. That's ultimately what right. we're talking about. It's like like different file folders in, in the machine. Right. So then we have Nessera in play, and we're still seeing that slowly roll out. You and I, have, over the years, we've gotten tons of people in your channel and in my yeah. channel show proof of credit cards being forgiven, mortgages, car payments, medical bills, the like. And too many right. to count. But we're seeing that continue to roll out. But that also has a a rebound or a reactionary effect on the elections. So, because you know, part of Nessa is a 120 day election cycle. So, we're we're watching to see the Biden be removed. Whether I think it's going to be an I've been telling my followers I think it's going to be an undisclosed medical illness today. Kamala said that she's ready to step in. Uh, if he's unable to perform. So they're already, they're already setting the narrative. Yeah, they're already... Already she, she's measuring the curtains now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, it, you know, I believe the Democratic Party is greasing every stair around the White House right now. Well, the White House. Yeah. Right. They're right. greasing so... all... <laughs> yeah, they're, cre they're greasing all the stairs and, and, and uh, banana peels or whatever you want to think of <laughs> to put on the, on the floor. Yeah, around Biden to try to help, you know, get them to help them uh, get rid of them. Yeah, because yeah, no, you're 100 right on that. But uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, you're fine. I'm just going to try to, for the interest of time, bundle some things together because I right. know you'll 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 be able to, with your knowledge, rattled off. So you have, you know, the Biden thing we're watching this month. I believe he's going to be out before the 27th or thereabouts, um, and then make some kind of transition in a quick, desperate move, you know, to try right. to save face. Then you have Nessera you know, continuing to, to give life and all that as that, as that precipitates. So with the Nessera aspect and the 120 day elections, uh, militarily, how, how might you see that from your experience playing out? Well, the, the, I believe the democratic party is going to need between six to eight months to prop up who they want in the white house. Um, so they're going to have to get him a uh, Biden out of there really quick. And, and that day, somewhere around the 27th, like you said, makes a lot of sense. Um, one of the articles I was reading talked about um, Nassar Jassar, uh, the exposure of it uh, after the 15th of February. Now, I'm, I'm not big on dates. I'm not. I'm just repeating what the, what the article said. And because uh, you've never been that person and I've never been that person to say dates. We look at, excuse me, we look at events. And uh, the, the, the events are actually leading to something happening. And it's going to happen. Uh, Financial-wise, it's going to happen. Even in the transition, when you transition from fiat currency back to uh, real money, real gold, um, it's going to cause, uh, um, it's gonna cause uh, a lot of this stuff to cancel itself out. Like uh, a lot of the debt that comes with the fiat currency is going to get wiped out by default. And people say, oh, Nassar is not real. Well, you don't have to call it Nassar. You can just call it a financial change, a financial, you know, debt transition. Jubilee. Yeah, debt jubilee, which is biblical. A lot of people don't know it. it's biblical. Mm -hmm. And in that transition, it's going to it's going to cancel out a lot of things. And a lot of uh, financial debt that's connected to the fiat currency, which is the paper money in your pocket, is going to get wiped out, and which is a good thing. Uh, but you're gonna, it's going to go to real money which is a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing because some people, I don't even know if they know how to handle real money yeah. once it gets into it because it's, it's going to have a, a greater value than the paper money. Well, for sure, because it actually is backed by constitutional yeah. tangible assets that God is God's money, as you and I yeah. talked and on the show with you many times yeah. before. Yeah, you can't reproduce God's money. You can't. You can dig and hope to hopefully find it in the ground. You mm -hmm. know, he gives it to us in, in, in the way he wants us to get it, but you can't reproduce it. So that's why it maintains its value. They messed up in 1920, uh, 21, when they pulled it off, when they pulled the, uh, 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 the gold standard and saying that it has no value. When gold has, I mean, it should be worth what, an ounce, $40,000 an ounce, $50,000 an ounce is what it should be. And it's not. So... Yeah, they they've been suppressing that for for the longest. Well, but, yeah. I, sorry, go ahead. Go no, ahead. I was, was going to say, but yeah, it, the twenty seven. Sometime in this month, there's going to be a transition, 
something's going to be seen, some clue is going to be out there. It's up for us to pick it up. And you were right. I think you're right on uh, uh, couple, this couple of month, couple of weeks. The decision behind Biden is going to have to expose itself. It is. It's going to have to. I say six to eight months. They're going to need someone in place before uh, that. You know, just to have the people run, you know, run with them as far as uh, the Democratic Party. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just going to say on the back, so what you're saying about gold and silver, <clears throat> I don't know if you saw our show last week with Bill Holter, but based on the charts, the schematics, the suppression of gold and silver, we all know has been prevalent for, for far too long. Yeah. Um, you know, we haven't been able to, you know, use uh, assets to pay off debt since 1960 that Bill Holter pointed out with his brilliant research and, and you know, 45 year right. experience in the industry. Um, we know that Gold is charted sometime this year to go between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. But Bill was saying that the true, if you if you calculated the true debt of the economy in respect to the employment ratios, you know, because you have companies like Yellow Trucking who laid off thirty thousand workers last year, put them on you know three to six months severance depending on position and and uh, tenure, right. right? They're still counting them as employees even though they're not actually working because they're on the payroll. Yeah. But but after one or two GDP cycles, you start to see the true effect of the economic downturn, right? So yes. with that in mind, and I think it was John, I uh, can't remember his last name that he mentioned, we put him on our Telegram channel. He estimates the unemployment rate is between 16 and 20% with all the actual real numbers. Right. So the true debt of, of the US is between two and 300 trillion, as he's mentioned. And right. to pay that off with gold and silver, you would have to have gold and silver be between 150 to 200,000 an ounce. So right. I think they're going to start it out at 10 to 15. And then as it becomes a standard, they'll level it off because like you said, the debt Jubilee will just kind of naturally, you know, resolve that. Right. But it's just interesting when you put all the analysis and the, the decoding together. So um, last question for today, because I know you're pressed uh, for time. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, just yesterday in your backyard, Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church, which I think uh, is in yeah. Houston, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There was a, a shooting, which right. uh, we had two events yesterday that got my attention. We had that, and then we had Bitcoin that was almost trending at 49,000. Ironically, now, as of this morning, I checked, it was almost touching 50,000, which currency 365 called to his credit. Right. And we're seeing that play out after the fact of the Super Bowl, of course, which is just so interesting. Yeah, I know. But, right. Sorry, go ahead. I know. I say, yeah, I know. Ironic, isn't it? Very, to yeah. say the least. But, um, you probably got wind of the shooting and I, I, I saw that it was a transgender uh, female. Yeah, I think that they're, they're pinning it on. Um, what was it? She was a, a female that was once male. No, she was a female. Yeah. Male, but went back. I don't know. I'm confused. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't keep track of it either, but at any rate, they've, they've, they've got a, a, somebody they've pinned as a suspect or a likely yeah. person that's, that's, you know, they need, always need a, a scapegoat. Um, anyway, with all that, you were probably one of the first to hear about it before it went national. Do you, th there are no coincidences. We know that, but from a geopolitical standpoint, what do you see as you were talking about false flags earlier, and that se definitely seems to be one in and of itself. So what do you make of this shooting in and of itself on Super Bowl Sunday and in a, in a faith-based um, building? Well, um, it was a little scary for us because my brother is a member of Lakewood. And I told him before that I, I, I went to visit the church once and I got a severe uh, bad vibe while I was in there. And so I, I've never, I never went back again, but I, I kept warning my brother about that, that church. Well, my niece was there. She went, uh, they went to church, she went to church with her aunt. And their members there as well. And my niece was there at the time. So yeah, it was a little scary once I, I figured out what was going on. I'm like, what shooting? But you know, Joel Olstein, his name has been coming up in a lot of uh, dark circles as well. And uh, I'm, I don't want to get into that uh, here. But uh, the one thing I will get into is the one thing that was on the news and how they found uh, over I think it's something like five hundred thousand dollars in cash in stashed in the wall somewhere in the in the uh, in the church in Lakewood. So I'm not surprised that something happened there. 
I'm not surprised, but uh, I, 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 I wasn't expecting a shooting to happen in that again because they do have security there. They have uh, police and sheriff working there. I've seen several police officers there. So uh, I still don't know what happened or why she did it or anything. Um, I just didn't, I chose not to even read the article because if I'm correct, uh, yeah. but a little bit that I do know, they, I think they took her down and the child got injured in the shoot in the crossfire that she had. She had a child with her and the child mm -hmm. got injured in the crossfire. But um, what happened, I don't know, but look at the, look at whether he's a transgender person as a suspect, which is if you look at all the shootings that's happened in the past, what, five years, three to five years, they've, mm -hmm. they've all been them days. Uh, uh, she he's so mm. you know from the alphabet gang is what I call them you know right yeah so but yeah it's it's if you see if you can look at the big picture they say a person always tell you who they really are so if you look at that big picture in the deep state and the people that are doing this you'll see that it's not it is not the it's not the guns that's doing this you know, it's people that are actually going through mental distress so. Yeah, I mean, they want to use this. I, my take on this, Joe, is that they probably want to use this as another false flag against, you know, uh, gun freedoms. It's an attack on the Second Amendment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, they're going to get away from the fact that uh, she was a transgender and probably, you know, right. going through some, you know, because they said that uh, the true numbers behind people who commit suicide after having that transitional surgery are people who do the transition, not before transition, after transition. And right. They, and they, and they're not happy with themselves. They grow out of whatever feeling they were feeling and, and they feel miserable behind it. And why she chose uh, that church to do it, maybe she was getting counseling there. Didn't like it. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But um, I, I hadn't done a lot of research because, you know, I've been sick lately. So I haven't done as much digging as I used to. But, uh, but I'm slowly getting back into it. And why? what better to to get back into doing my live show then with my home, <laughs> with my brother from another mother. There you go. <laughs> there you go, brother. Yeah. I, I remember that story a couple of years ago about them finding, I think a bag of $600,000 in, yeah. in Joel's yeah. office. Yeah. The, it, one it of the maintenance guys too. found it through the walls. Yeah. 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 I don't know how they, you know, I don't know how they sussed that out, but they did. And so, yeah, yeah there's, you know, that's a whole other story for a whole other day, but uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, like you said, to your point in the beginning of the conversation, the truth is finding its way out. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, Joe, um, I'm going to give you the last word, as I always do with our great guests like yourself. Um, where can people find out about you and what would you like to uh, leave with our audience? Well, Black Pill Red is one of them. Uh, it's the same name, Black Pill ED Red uh, on YouTube. I will st uh, start my shows back up again. Uh, I had my computer completely wiped. Uh, prepare yourself for widespread, you know, uh, censoring because they don't want the information out. They don't want the truth out. And, 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 uh, if you can grab my book off Amazon, it's a really good read. You'll love it. Like I said, I'm gonna have to autograph uh, your, your copy. I have it right here on my desk so that I can autograph it and, uh, I'll mail it off, mail it out to you. Thank you, sir. But, uh, uh, Oh, when you see it, people look at it. It's Joe Williams, but the name J.L. Hilliam is a pen name that me and my uh, writing partner you when we do stuff together. So we're working on another book right now. Uh, but that's that one there was uh, we won third place in Hollywood screenwriting competition when we did that one. But back off the top. Anyway, it was a pleasure, John. Thank you. I'm proud of you, brother. I'm very proud of you. I've been watching your shows, man. And and some of the people that you're booking, man, or these people do not do shows with just anyone. And, and, and hopefully, you know, your audience, uh, even the naysayers, because they're listening to you as well. And they hear that these people that you are interviewing just don't do everyone's show. They will probably never do my show, never. But your show, the only reason why they're doing your show, because you've been served. You have, you have, and they're following that. you and they know that you know what you're talking about. So that's the reason why they're able to do your show and want to come back. 
they're probably lining back up to do more shows with you because you know what you're talking about. And that's the reason why they, they don't do just any one show. They do your show, which is good. And I'm like, man, I was expecting this to happen years ago, but it, it, it was God's timing. And man, it's, this is the perfect timing to this last little run, uh, the home stretch before the election. And before this financial, tra- uh, 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 the financial transition. Yeah, transition. Yeah, yeah, this financial transition. I mean, this is perfect time, man, brother. And I, man, I love you, and I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. But you're also, it's just God's hand. You know, He's just yeah. using this okay. channel for a season. I'm just honored to be a part of it, and you're a big part of it. You know, like I told the audience, you know, I have a, a, a robust group of God loving people who are humble and you're one of them now. So people can see a seminal example of one of the people that I get, you know, information and we put it together and we pray about it. And we, you know, discernment as we always talk about is key. And you're really good at that as a person. And also from your, just your overall background, militarily, from a cop experience, I think that's served you well also for this time. So we're, we're honored to have you and love to have you back again uh, next month. And um, yeah, everybody, please go check out Joe's channel, Black Hilled Red, and we'll leave that link in the description. Joe so Williams? Thing, one more please. thing, man. One more thing. Um, the one thing that really upsets me is the fact that people are challenging your faith. In some of the uh, comments I was reading and how they think that you're using God in order to get your information out. I'm like, ah, no, it's the other way around. God is using him to get his information out. Because We've been praying for four years together before you even start doing your shows. We would call each other and pray, uh, uh, we, when we, especially when we're both going through some deep spiritual situation, we would call each other and we would pray. This is before you started doing the shows. And, and, and same thing before me, before I actually really started doing my show, we would still call each other, ask each other how, each other, how, how we're doing, how's our day, talk some, uh, uh, some G-codes, some codes and breaking down stuff, financial stuff, and then we'll pray. And we we pray, we pray we've been praying for longer than we've been doing shows. Mm. So for people to say that you're using God like that, no, it's no, no, this is real true spiritual brotherhood, right? So absolutely, yeah, absolutely. yeah. So all everyone else, yeah. Okay, just yeah, stay in your lane. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna <laughs> let you say anything bad about God or, or my brother right here. So yeah, no, uh uh-uh, trust me. This these people think that you you're fake no no this guy is real when it comes to god so anyway i yeah i had to get off my soapbox there i'm all right no it's okay thank you joe i appreciate that you have my back you always have been consistent in all those ways so thank you again joe williams thanks for joining the podcast and we look forward to seeing you again soon all right joe thanks a lot man thanks a lot for this